Hello everybody, Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we're going to look at something a little bit more fun, something for the filthy casuals to come about doing some modeling, and basically what we've done is taken the uh, skills you've learned and mastered playing Minecraft and turned them into a content creation system, and that is called 3D Slash, and essentially that is exactly what we're dealing with here. It is a voxel-based uh, modeling program that is very gamish, uh, and you can use it to create simple voxelized shapes, as we're about to see. Now, it's available in both an application and as a website. We're looking at the website version today and we're looking at the free version. Uh, now the downloadable app is pretty much exactly the same thing. It's just running into an application as opposed to uh, on the website. Plus obviously it works offline. Now the uh, application for form is a little bit more limited than the full blown version. We'll look at that first before we jump in. There's actually a free version. You can use web fully and you can basically trial the offline version so saving is disabled. Uh, eight color standard. Um, and you are queued to export. So you can export out to various different formats such as OBJ, FBX, etc. cetera, uh, but you use a queue. And then the standalone application, you just don't do anything. Uh, there's educational and professional versions available. Most people would be dealing with premium and there you are looking at $2 a month. Build annually for $24. So it's not an outrageously expensive app, but there is a price involved. Uh, so let's go ahead and create. Now you can, um, with that eight color limitation, you can fully use the free version that we're about to use today. And here it is in your browser. Pretty straightforward process. Your uh, right mouse button pans around. Your middle, so the middle mouse button actually does the exact same thing. And then a little confusingly, your left mouse button does an orbit or it does the operation. I'm not sure I like this. I don't like sharing the same button for multiple tasks. It makes things a little confusing. But here you see we've got a primitive cube to work from. And what you do is basically carve it up just like when you're playing Minecraft. So right now we are in hammer mode and we are in plots. We can switch to lines or curves. And basically this one is going to take one cube at a time. And you hear there's even a Minecraft-esque game sound that comes out of here. And this kind of is how you would model things using this uh, modeler. Again, we can rotate around here and go this way. And I'll switch into line mode. See, this interface is a little weird because you got to click to get the first start of the line and then it flips into orbits. I really don't like that functionality of reusing uh, you know, the do command, the left click and the orbit click because it makes things like using lines a little bit more confusing. But you see there we are drawing a line from our last point and I could just basically go ahead and carve all of those pieces out and there they go. That's your simplified version. So we can also come up here. Uh, we've got a travel tool, which basically is the exact opposite. So I just made my surface a little bit bigger and this adds voxels back in. Over here controls the size of your voxels, like so, and you can make quite large voxels, basically our cube in size, like so. And then again, that was the travel. We've also got a chisel, which takes a whole swath out at once, like that. Now let me go back to that axis, and then boom, they're all gone. So that is your chisel tool. You've got various different operation modes that can, it can work on. Uh, we can also control it to link to just color. Uh, here we can do whole slices. This is basically the exact same thing in reverse. So I could say, for example, turn this one back on. There. All right, boom. So you can use that to basically recompose surfaces. And then drill, you can move a whole or remove a whole bunch at once, like boom and boom. And the size of your drill obviously is going to affect the scope that it deals with. So let's go back to our wall and we gotta have something to work with here. So it's at a really big cube to work with. And that is essentially your default modeling tools. You've got these ability basically to add voxels and carve them up in various different sizes. And then we come here, we got your color tools, your standard bucket. Um, syringe is basically kind of like drawing into the surface with a bunch of colors and your spray paint right there. Now you'll notice back here, you're limited to those eight colors for now in this version. So we can, Let's go down to a much smaller size. You can basically spray paint like so. And that is kind of it for color. And then down here, you've got a couple of more fill advanced options. You've got uh, geometric shapes, objects you can bring in. So I could bring in, say, a sphere like so. And I could say, I want to um, carve it out. And there you see the end result of carving that sphere out of the other option. It's kind of like a Boolean tool. And you'll notice if we come in here, we're actually dealing with a whole lot of voxels now and no performance problems at all. Pretty straightforward, pretty easy to work with. And then finally, you've got the advanced right here. And this is kind of, you can take a shape or a texture. Uh, so let's go to their shared sample. Sorry, we'll take the Eiffel Tower here. And okay. 
and we can switch here to paste mode. Oh, it's only a premium. Okay, which one was it? In, I don't want to go premium. Go on back. Uh, let's see. So there we've got our surface. Let's go back to moving it slightly. On the surface like so. And then we can chisel out that actual amount. So what this is going to do is basically it uses the image you applied as a mask. So I can pick a much bigger brush. And you'll see the end result. And so you can basically do a rapid carve out just along that mask that you defined. And you see we're basically carving an Eiffel Tower or whatever shape you provided into the surface. Pretty straightforward for the most part. There's not a whole lot going on here, but you can, um, you know, basically, it's a simplified version in some ways of say Magic or Voxel or other Voxel-based applications. Uh, the free version, as I said, is pretty fully functional. You are limited down to that uh, eight colors in your painting, and you saw that uh, texturing function I was about to use uh, for painting an image onto a surface is disabled. You're gonna find a couple of other things that are locked to premium only, but there's a fair bit you can get out of the free version. And here you can see the result from the other side, and I'm really glossing over the functionality here because, well, actually I'm not. I'm showing you the extents of it. I'm just not showing you a very uh, accurate use of it in the real world. Uh, but this is, if you're going for that, um, you know, blocky Minecraft voxel look, this might be a viable tool for you. And then when you've got a surface you're actually happy with and good to go, you actually have a fair number of export options. You come up here, um, click here, you got the various different export options. This now supports Facebook in that new, oh, I can't remember the name right now, right now. Uh, the new JS uh, web-based file format. I've talked about it many times, but it's not coming to me right now. Um, over here, you've got STL, OBJ, DAE, and FBX file formats. Um, you can export it to basically a web player version that will play directly off 3D Slash's site, and you can send it off to some 3D printing sites. Now again, in the free version, this is queued. I've never actually tested to see how long this takes. So you go ahead and do a download. Now you see it takes 60, it takes a minute basically before they allow you to download that, or you do the $2 a month premium version if you need it on demand. Um, and then you'll end up seeing when you're done, it, it's a fairly dense mesh because um, you know uh, if we go back here and look, there's actually quite a few polygons being generated by doing this. But if we'd created a lot simpler mesh, uh, it would be a lot less dense. And really that's about it. Like I said, it's a bit of a fun one just for a Sunday night kind of thing. If you're into that voxel graphic style, this might be useful to you. And once again, you've seen the uh, web-based application, uh, but there is in fact a, um, a desktop version as well. It's actually a little bit more locked down. You can't export out of it. But if you are interested in trying this out, the website is 3dslash.net. Um, and I'll throw that link in the comment down below. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's it for now. I hope some of you guys at least found that interesting. Again, it's not the most serious of apps out of there. It's going to be very niche, of course. But yeah, it was fun for me to play around with, so I figured I'd share it with you guys. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Uh, and that's it for now. I will see you all later. Goodbye.